All right, here we are, year three, third annual Battle at the Beach. Taylor Barton here from the 7 on 7 Association with the man, the myth, the legend, Brandon Huffman of 247 Sports. Huff, how you doing? I'm living the dream, Taylor. Back in Southern California this weekend in the homeland with rain on the horizon. Man. We're all Southern California. That's why I've always talked you up about being from there, not expecting you to go full Seattle on me this weekend. The funniest thing is it's watching uh, people in LA and SoCal freak out about the rain. Like there's literally, they're shutting down rentals on grass fields because of the rain. And people are like, it's it's funny to watch how it moves because in the Northwest where we're at, it's like people freak out when the sun comes out and they're like, ah, oh, you know, drink water and don't overheat. Like the rain is just, it's just a day that ends in Y for us in the Northwest. So um, it's sprinkles and it's storm watch 2024 in Southern California. <laughs> pretty crazy, pretty crazy. So um, Huff, you know, this has been a, a, a fun tournament for us on our circuit. You know, we're in, we've done Seattle already done Vancouver. Uh, we got uh, LA this weekend. Then we're up in NorCal then we're in Portland and then Boise and Spokane and uh, all over the place. But this LA one is always fun um, for us. The time of the year, we're right in the heart of, of the seven on year. Um, always good programs and teams and players that come to this. You know, we can go through a list of all the teams and players that uh, have played in this the last few years. And it's kind of a who's who uh, on the West Coast and actually even nationally. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun this year. Uh, no different. A lot of good teams, a lot of good players. So we'll jump in and and start talking about them. Um, to to start out, we uh, you know we've got our third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth freshman high school, ten U, twelve U, fourteen U, fifteen U, eighteen U. So uh, should be a a fun mix of teams at all those different divisions. Um, should be very competitive. We have teams coming from Canada and Oregon and SoCal and NorCal and a um, bunch of different states. So. I'm excited to see it um, and jump into it. We'll see if the, the rain hinders it. But these kids that are going to go play college, even if you're from sunny, warm Southern Cal and you go play at Washington State, you know, you're going to be playing in snow. But if you're from an area where there's a bunch of snow and cold, you're going to have to go play at Arizona State or at Florida. So that's the fun thing about college is that's real home field advantage. I always laugh in high school when people go, oh, we got them at our place this year and it's five minutes down the road. Right. Um, in, in college is where, and, and pro, you start seeing the weather and the, the home field advantage. So uh, in these kind of tournaments, it's fun. When we do our Seattle tournament, um, you know, and teams come up and they're playing in the rain, it's like, look, you want to play in the, well, did want to play in the Pac-12, I guess now it's Pac-2, but um, oh, you're going to have to travel around and play in different weather elements. So that's what's fun about these tournaments is to see how uh, players react to it, adjust, coaches adjust and how they're coaching it. So uh, we'll see what they do, but let's let's hop into this right now. Um, talking on some of the programs, uh, you can't come to LA without mentioning uh, premium, Coach Fig and, and premium. Um, and then there's also uh, Goon Squad. Uh, Coach David does a great job with them. So uh, I'll just maybe go over premium and, and Goon Squad a little bit. Yeah, I mean, premium has been home to some of the top players that Southern California has produced in the last few years. Bryce Young, a Heisman Trophy winner, number one overall pick in the draft last year. Amon Ross St. Brown, a star for the uh, Detroit Lions, um, you know, last year. There, it was their team, I think, made it to the to the semifinals, if I remember, and that team was all 2026 players. They were all freshmen. Brandon Lockhart, one of the top corners in the country. Ashton Pinnell was playing quarterback for them. Madden Williams, Matt Reardon. So they've always got a really good young team that will go and compete. I remember, gosh, three years ago, they won a tournament four years ago. In fact, it was the weekend before COVID. Their freshman team won a tournament in Portland, and they beat teams that had guys two years older than them. And that was the last tournament we went to uh, before, you know, 2021, when COVID kind of rocked everything. And that was a freshman-laden team. And, you know, so long ago, those guys just finished their freshman year in college. Uh, so, they, you know, they've got a nice history and tradition of their younger guys coming. And this is one of their younger teams that's going to probably be pretty loaded, uh, as usual. And then you mentioned Goon Squad. You know, two years ago, they kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, I remember talking to, to Big Nick Yamaliava, his team, Team Toa, which made it to the championship game last year, said, hey, a lot of these guys are, you know, guys that were with us, but they're playing at, at Downey High School. And they got this pretty good quarterback named Aiden Childs that you guys are going to want to watch. And then that team mm -hmm. damn near won the very first battle at the beach, uh, yeah. trailed big in the finals, and then rallied to take it to overtime. But that was kind of Aiden Childs' big, you know, national moment 
Uh, a month later, two months later, he was the MVP at the Under Armour camp in Northern California, ultimately ended up an All-American, top 10 quarterback, and now he's the crown jewel of Michigan State's class. So the guy that took over for him at Downey High School this last fall, big pressure, a lot of big shoes to fill, a kid named Oscar Rios, who I'm a big fan of. He's a 2026. Uh, he is got offers from all over. Michigan State has already offered him, of course. Auburn offered him. Uh, so he's going to be kind of that next guy there for the, the goon squad. And I like what I saw from him a couple of weeks ago down in Las Vegas. Well, and I, I like it. You mentioned Aiden Charles, that KT prep game. They went into overtime. Yeah. KT prep that year had Jaden Rashada, but he wasn't at that tournament. So a kid named Luke Duncan was yeah. playing who he stepped in and emerged, ends up signing with UCLA. And that's what's so cool is that we see these guys when they're young or we see them when they step in when someone else can't be there. And that's that opportunity. And, you know, Tom Brady got an opportunity when uh, Drew Bledsoe goes down and the rest is history. So in this kind of stuff, um, even if a team doesn't have their top guy there, it's like, hey, the next guy in, uh, this is your opportunity now. And you're on a big stage, so go do your thing. And that's what Luke Duncan did. That's what Aiden Childs did. And uh, in in this weekend, inevitably, there's going to be other people that step into to those roles and really uh, jump up on our radars or yeah. are on our radars and, and move up. Um, speaking of moving up, so we, we go from kind of Southern Cal. Let's talk about some of the Northern um, California programs that are coming down uh, to LA this weekend to, to compete. Um, let's go with CUC uh, mm -hmm. run by Trey Taylor out of Sacramento and West Coast Preps uh, run by my guy A. Ray out of uh, San Jose. Yeah, you know, and CUC, I know that you and Trey go back to playing together uh, at City College City San Francisco College. 100 years ago. Um, you know, and I, I saw Trey a couple of weeks ago at the KT prep tournament and the guy you actually took over for at quarterback, Nick Rolovich was there. So hey. it was like a, a Rams reunion just South of the city, uh, the day before they all mourned the 49ers blowing a double digit lead, but that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> Niner fans. We're here to talk about CUC, which is based in Sacramento, uh, their top player on their actual seven on 17 from a skill position standpoint is a kid named Lono Shotel. Uh, defensive backs got some offers already. Um, big, long, athletic guy. Plays DB, plays receiver. He's got a chance to play on either side of the ball. Uh, and then in, you know, a tip of the cap to guys like JT Tumoau and Malik Gagbo, they got a big man, a defensive lineman who actually committed to Washington on New Year's Day and then saw Kayla Nabor leave for the Alabama job. He decommitted. Josiah Sharma is his name. He goes by Sugar Bear. Uh, we mm -hmm. actually had him at the Avery Strong Showcase last summer, and he had just gotten his first offer from Washington. Since then, he's blown up. Miami's offered, Alabama's offered, Texas is offered, uh, all the national who's who. And so he comes, a 300-plus pound defensive lineman, and he's playing tight end for them. West Coast Preps, I got a chance to see their quarterback, Xander Eshelman, plays at Menlo Atherton, uh, a, you know, a, a good program in the Bay that's produced guys like Troy Franklin, uh, that's probably going to end up being a first-round draft pick out of Oregon, um, a really strong program there in the Bay, and I saw, saw Xander two weeks ago when I was in Las Vegas at a camp, and liked what I saw from him. So, if you remember right, West Coast Preps was the number one overall seed last yeah. year in this tournament going into to bracket play, had yeah. a it just ran through uh, pool play and got that number one seed. So, you know, they're, they're not going to be in that. They're not going to be intimidated by anybody. No. And we'll see them also in our uh, NorCal tournament in a few weeks. And then also in Portland, uh, which Portland's uh, almost we're, we're at 92 teams for it right now. So that's going to be a really big one, a really fun one. So uh, excited to see them. Let's stay in that, that Northern Cal area. Uh, two other programs to talk about here have uh, deliberate training. Um, and then also uh, our guys, KT Prep, Nathan and, and Julian Kenyon, uh, running that program out of the Bay Area. Start start with deliberate training. Yeah, deliberate training ran by Steven Amoko, a former Oregon player. Um, one of the best teams in kind of that South Bay area of Northern California. He coaches at College of San Mateo. <clears throat> um, you know, really good program, really solid program. I got a chance to see him at that KT prep tournament a couple of weeks ago. I liked what I saw. They got some really good young talent. They got some older guys that may or may not be there because there's still CIF basketball playoffs going on, uh, like Simeon Brown. But I know that Amoko's teams were always well coached. Uh, they made it to the finals of a couple of these tournaments in the past or the semifinals in a couple of, they were at the Bay Area tournament last year and always really like what he's got. AJ Rangel is a 2026 athlete uh, for um, 
Deliberate Training, who plays at Valley Christian, um, and, and got a chance to, to be a guy uh, in a couple of years. Uh, his dad was a trainer in the West Catholic Athletic League area, trained guys like Uswa Amanam, who was the former Rose Bowl MVP. Michael Clay was the Fiesta Bowl MVP uh, in that San Jose area. So I always like what Amoco's teams bring to the table. And then uh, you said KT Prep. Uh, you know, you can't talk Northern California seven on seven teams without mentioning KT Prep. Um, one of the originals, them along with TMP, they were in what the semifinals two weekends ago in Vancouver. Um, and they weren't at full strength in that tournament. They were missing some key guys. Um, one of them is their their quarterback, Michael Mitchell. They, they had him uh, the weekend before when they made it to the semifinals of the battle tournament. They were running with Braden Turner uh, in Vancouver, uh, who plays at Monta Vista High School. And so, you know, Mikey Mitchell will be back this year. We saw Mikey when he was an eighth grader in Tacoma at the, the Space Needle shootout and big arm kid, but Kellen Ford mentioned Monta Vista. Uh, you know, I can't have a, a conversation about KT Prep without talking about their tight ends. Kellen Ford. Yeah. Uh, one of the premier tight ends in Northern California, Tony Keck. We saw another kid as an eighth grader, uh, got a couple of new offers this week uh, out of Clayton Valley. And then Logan Knapp, the other tight end. They have three Division I tight ends on their team, which is no surprise. This is the program that produced, you know, Devin Asiasi was the number one tight end in the West. His senior year, Brock Bowers, the number one tight end, uh, will probably be the first tight end pick this year. So they've got a history of good tight ends. And Cooper so Flanagan. Uh, yeah, Cooper Flanagan, who's at Notre Dame. Uh, Eric Komenhoek, who is now, who played with the Chargers, played at USC. Um, you, you know, you just go back and they're kind of tight end you, if you will. And they've got three Division One tight ends this season. Yeah. Um, so we've gone Southern Cal, Northern Cal. Let's go back Southern Cal and South South. Let's go to... Uh, the San Diego area, uh, Team Makasi and uh, Verlaine. Uh, is it? I I, I don't want to Betofe. pronounce it wrong. Huh? Verlaine Bertofe. But Bertofe. Yeah, I didn't want to say the the, the last name wrong. But um, he's uh, got an unbelievable program and unbelievable talent. Dudes everywhere. So uh, talk a little bit about uh, Verlaine, that program, and some of the kids. Yeah, they are they're loaded. They've got they've got talent, you know, really everywhere on that field in the secondary at receiver, uh, at quarterback, and it's young. You know, they've got guys like Delonte Williams, who goes by the nickname Uno. They got Brandon Arrington, who might be the fastest player in Southern California in the 2026 class. AJ Logan has offers. Paris Vernon has offers. Um, you know, I'm, I know I'm missing a bunch, but you know that's the kind of program that he's had. They made it to the semifinals a year ago as well. Actually, might have been the quarterfinals. Um, but I want to say they won. Was it the middle school division last year, or maybe it was yeah. the yeah, so, fifth year middle school? Yeah. Okay, so they, you know they've always got a good young program too, which filters up, and that's why it's not a surprise that their team is pretty 2026 20, heavy. Uh, but you know, Makazi's always got dudes that have gone on and played. They had a kid. Few or four, uh, gosh, probably longer than that, five or six years ago, uh, named Chris Olave, who was kind of a uh, yeah. relative unknown. He's turned out to be okay. So there's a nice field position players there uh, with with Coach V squad. Yeah, he's. I'm I'm excited to see them. Always excited to see them. Uh, let's stay in in the Southern Cal area. Talk a little bit about um, Desert Football Academy. James Dockery. That's a name a lot of people are going to be familiar with. Was uh, an absolute stud as a a, a player. Um, talk a little bit about James. Uh, him personally, and then uh, that program. Yeah, you know, James is you know old, old school guy who uh, you know played at Oregon State, like you said, done a really good job. He's originally from uh, that part of California with the Palm Desert High School, uh, coaches at Xavier Prep. So he's had some guys the last few years. Had a kid we saw a few years ago uh, that ended up going to Army. Dad played at USC. He played for Army. Actually played for a team in the Northwest. Uh, but you know, there, there's some good talent out there deep in the desert when you're, you know, looking for sun, uh, in January, you go find them. And so, you know, they're, they're probably, it's probably 90 to hundred degrees. They may be unfamiliar with that wet stuff that's coming from the sky, but doc, uh, <laughs> they were at the tournament two years ago, the very first tournament and, you know, it made some noise there. So I always like, you know, seeing doc and his squad. Speaking of speaking of noise, Doc is. Uh, I always get complaints from other teams because he's behind the end zone coaching his defense, and we actually made a rule: defensive coaches can be behind the end zone if they're out of the end zone, um, and it drives the other teams nuts. But I'm like, listen, man, the guy's just intense. He's coaching. Uh, believe me, you want to listen to what he's saying because he is a phenomenal coach. He was a great player, so uh, always worth the price of admission just to to watch Doc on the the, the sideline doing his thing. So um, talk. Um, 
program look forward to to, to see going back up north um 209 uh tmp um tmp 209 they you know i i had to write their name in the schedule in a in a certain way coach uh coach got me on it so uh talk a little bit about um them huff i know they're they're up north i believe stockton area is that correct yep. Stockton area, uh, you know, they were a team that, if I remember right, their freshman team made it to the championship game last year at the Battle of the Beach. And at the Battle of the Bay, I want to say their freshman team may have made it to the championship game at that as well. So, again, you know, we, we talk about some of these teams that win them a few years ago that as they get older, they'll start to become high schoolers. Uh, you know, Roy does a great job in that Stockton area. Um, his top player is a kid named Ivan Puerta uh, out of St. Mary's High School in Stockton, a, a loaded program that's always cranking out top players. And, you know, they're going to be a scrappy team that's going to make some noise in this tournament. And, you know, I always love watching the 209 Elite. In fact, I was rocking my 209 Elite shirt that uh, he gave me yesterday. He gave me this long sleeve shirt that was nice and warm and made me think, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing them this weekend. There you go. There you go. That's the way to Huff's heart. Get him a good, get him a good shirt or, mm -hmm. or recommend a, a good beer IPO or, or a brewery. I, I, you can give me an IPO too, as long as I get those, the front end of the stocks options on the IPO. <laughs> if I don't get a good stock option, I'll just go have an IPA. The um, two programs just to kind of uh, mention too. So ProVision out of Spokane, Washington, bringing eight teams down uh, amongst all the age divisions. Greg Peach and Jake Hoffman uh, running that program. Greg Peach was All-American at Eastern Washington, played in the CFL a bunch of years. Uh, just got a new facility out there in Spokane. They're just killing the game uh, in Eastern Washington with all the kids coming in training and they really run their program mm -hmm. the right way. Jake Hoffman has taken over overseeing the, the, the seven on and kind of five on uh, portion of that program as they've grown. Uh, so it's really cool to see uh, they're very well coached, very disciplined. Um, they, yeah. they play hard, they play well, they're respectful. They're one of our favorite programs to, to have in the circuit, just because you know what you're getting with them. Um, you keep an eye on record Tweedy too. He's probably the top quarterback in Eastern Washington in 2025 plays at Mount Spokane high school. You know, when we think quarterbacks, we always naturally think, you know, Seattle, just given the, the history, especially Piala, who they've cranked out. But before Sam Hewitt was breaking records, the state record holder for passing in this state was Brett Rippon, who went on to be a four-year yeah. starter at yeah. Boise State, played in the NFL. And, you know, Brett's a Spokane native himself. So, you know, Riker Tweedy is a two-sport athlete um, who got a chance to, to be – pretty heavily recruited this year uh, out of Eastern Washington. So he, he's certainly one to keep an eye on. Awesome. Um, and then the last program to mention big time. Um, and that's run by Keon Raymond out of Calgary, Alberta up in, in Canada. And I love it. They're bringing a couple teams down to this tournament. I believe they're also going to be at our Spokane tournament um, uh, next month. So uh, they've, been on our circuit since since we started and have come out to, to tournaments um i think this is the second or third year in a row they've been to our la one and keon raymond was um heck of a player we talked about dockery and greg peach being great players keon uh is a household name uh up in canada and just a great guy um runs a great program i just am not as familiar with their kids and that's why a tournament like this is so great huh frankly because those kids from calgary get to get down here and compete against these san diego kids and bay area and seattle and uh utah kids and in front of guys like yourself and and other media that's going to be there and and our staff so it's really an opportunity for them on a big stage uh to to make a name for themselves so excited to to see them and and to see keon well, and we talked about, you know, two years ago where coming into that event, it was the SEC commit Jabari Johnson. It was Jaden Rashada who had, you know, all the attention that we, we thought we we're going to be getting. They were in the championship game at the Space Needle Shootout, the first one of the association yep. for that year. And they get down there and Jabari gets knocked out. But it wasn't by Rashada this time. It was by Luke Duncan. And, and like you mm -hmm. said, at that point, Luke Duncan had no offers ultimately ended up going to the Pac-12 slash Big Ten with UCLA. And then Aiden Childs at that point, I think his only offers were Houston Baptist and San Jose State. And now he ended up being, I think, the number two quarterback in the transfer portal That's right. this year. Yeah. And, you know, nobody really knew who Aiden Childs was two years ago. I knew because I went to college with this coach and he'd been telling me about him for years. But 
you know, that was an event that essentially launched guys in the recruitment because the timing that you do the event in, in early March, right before the, the quiet period gets going and the eval period, even last year, you know, in the, in the championship game, we all knew who Madden Yamaliava was, but be great, which won the tournament had a couple of guys that nobody really knew about. And now those guys have ended up with offers. So, you know, coming to this event and, and getting seen by all the multiple media outlets that are going to be there, you know, we got rivals will be there 24 seven will be there. You know, a, a whole bunch of websites will be there at this event and we'll get a chance. And so, yeah, while players like a Kellen Ford and, you know, Michael Mitchell and some of those guys, the, the, the San Diego kids might draw the attention. This is the opportunity for guys that are relative unknowns. And, and guys, let me, let me just say this too. Last weekend was a bad weekend for seven on seven across the country. I mean, it was going viral all over the country, whether it was a tournament in Nevada, a tournament down the Southeast, please keep the dip shittery alone yeah. and leave it at home. Yeah. Go out and have fun. You can do it without, you know, acting like jackasses. I say that every week, and I will say that the association tour does a really good job of kind of keeping the histrionics to its, you know, isolated. But please, let's keep that weekend, this weekend especially. Uh, well, pretty- and, and let's let's cap it off with that. Let's talk about the tie-in of our tour called the Bravery Tour. Uh, the branding people are going to see with boards, feather flags, fence wraps, tents, Avery Strong and, and Bravery. Um, most people are familiar with the story, but Brandon's daughter, Avery, um, who just uh, in February uh, had her eight year anniversary of her passing um, at six years old, was diagnosed with 100 percent fatal form of brain tumor, DIPG, passed away at seven years old. Um, and a foundation, Brandon and his wife, Amanda, set up a foundation in her name, Avery Huffman, DIPG Foundation. Uh, and that's something that we did with our circuit is proceeds from it each year go to the foundation. We do a check at the end of the year. Uh, last year we did a $10,000 check. I think we've done 70 plus thousand, um, over the years to it. Um, and that's a, a, a big thing is that as we're out there, of course you want to compete and you want to win and you should, and, and some shit talking is, is healthy. I like it. I want it to be a fun environment, but when it becomes more about what you're doing and saying off of the field and these, uh, program coordinators and, and trainers that are leading the charge in the tomfoolery instead of policing their own parents and kids. Yeah, as a staff, we're out there. We'll try and oversee and monitor it, but it's got to be a, a, a team effort. And let's keep in mind what this cause is all about. You know, Brandon, yeah. you're going to be out there in person. Yes, you cover all these kids for 247 Sports. Absolutely. This is their time to shine. Um, but also, you know, your daughter's name is on all of the branding, and this is something representing her name and your family. And so any kids or coaches or parents that are out there disrespecting it, um, obviously that's going to be something that you take to heart and I take to heart. So uh, to to go with what you're saying, absolutely for everyone to keep this in perspective that, listen, refs make bad calls. They just do. They miss calls. They do in the NFL with slow motion. So you don't think a seven on seven ref uh, is going to miss a call, but they're, they, our refs, I, I promise you the rest we have coming out, they don't care who wins this. We don't have a talk beforehand and say, make sure you call, make calls this way or this way. They don't care. And for kids, if you're that good, you know what? As a DB, you're going to get beat on reps. QB, you're going to get beat on a coverage. Uh, receiver, you're going to get pressed. But come back the next rep and show us. That's what we want to see in the evaluation. When we talk to college coaches, I'll tell you, this is, uh, I'll finish with this story. I remember my buddy was head coach at Portland State. And I called him after a seven on tournament and said, hey, this DB is a stud. I think you guys should offer him. And he said, he said, yeah, tell me about him. And I said, look, I'm going to send you his highlights from the tournament. And he said, no, send me film of the rep after he got beat on a play. And what he was saying was, look, I, I, everyone's highlights look good, but I want to see when the kid gets beat, what does he do on the next rep? Is yep. he taking cheap shots? Is he pouting? Is he pointing fingers? Is he holding his hamstring like, oh, you know, my my hamstring sore? Or does he just come back and play? And I, I that always just stuck with me because that's what this is about. You watch pro, you watch college, guys get beat the best of the best get beat. It's how you respond to it. So I, I think that's where guys' ego comes into play and, and get in trouble. So um, yeah, I, I hope everyone keeps it keeps it in pocket um, this weekend. Remembers the bigger cause, and uh, we can have fun without all the the BS. Appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, guys. Also, 
you know, not to make this sad, but my sister passed away earlier this week. She was very close with my daughter, Avery. It was, you know, her niece. So I'm not in a great mood. I'm coming down. This is my first event back at work, uh, you know, post uh, post my sister passing away. So I'm looking forward to getting back out and a little getting a little sense of normalcy. But this is not the weekend to act like jackasses because my patience level will be non-existent. There you go. You guys heard it from the man. And I'll remember that. Let's let's keep it. Let's let's finish it on a positive note. We're gonna have a great weekend. Third third uh, year back at this. Tommy Burgers and Southern California breweries is all I care about, and Phil's Coffee to fuel me when I'm heading up to spend all day in the friggin' rain, which I could have done there a few battle, Taylor. There you go. Awesome. Well, appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, we will uh, have a great weekend and um, tune into our social media channels. We'll be getting out. Uh, Photos, interviews, highlights, uh, team championships, MVPs, uh, all of that. Uh, you can also follow Brandon on uh, his accounts too, uh, as he's getting any pictures or videos or interviews. So uh, we should should be active this weekend. Should be a lot of fun. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll catch you for our uh, pre-tournament podcast in two weeks before our Northern Cal tournament.